Namane participate in et spiritu sancti. Amen. A blessed and happy uh, Feast of the Epiphany to everybody. Um, this is actually the original, uh, we could say the original Christmas celebration was, uh, was today. Um, and in fact, this, on this day, there were um, four events in the life of Christ, kind of four uh, um, moments which, which were all understood to be um, part of the, the, the Epiphany uh, celebration, we could say. Um, and Epiphany, of course, means manifestation. I, I mentioned this, this this past Sunday, but just kind of to review. Um, God making himself manifest in the world. That's what epiphany is. And, and so we have uh, today uh, the dramatic arrival uh, of the kings of the world, all the Gentile nations coming to worship Christ. Um, uh, we have uh, prophecies from Psalm 72, from Isaiah chapter 60, uh, which we'll see. Uh, but, but so this was kind of like, and in the East, you still see this. In the East, the Byzantine churches, the Orthodox, uh, Christmas is not nearly as, as, as much of a celebration as is Epiphany. Um, so later on, uh, uh, the birth of our Lord was separated from the visit of the Magi and also uh, the baptism of the River Jordan and the wedding feast at Cana. Uh, but all of those were different, different manifestations uh, of God in the world as, as Messiah, as Savior, as, as um, the fulfillment of the prophecies. Um, so let's see. <laughs> uh, so yes, yeah, so the birth of our Lord, that was separated. The, the, the first time our Lord was visible in the flesh, and that was just to the, the, the Jews, the shepherds. The visit of the Magi, when, when all the Gentile nations came, represented by the Magi, and then the baptism of the River Jordan, uh, when Christ manifested himself as, as, uh, uh, the, uh, publicly as the Messiah. And then the wedding feast at Cana, changing water into wine, Christ manifesting his power over nature, uh, the power of God itself, himself. Uh, so th those were all understood to be part of this feast, and it was only over time that they were all later uh, separated. So the East kept the tradition of, of today as being the primary feast, but in, in the West, I mean, sadly, Epiphany kind of gets, I mean, everybody knows about Christmas. Uh, I mean, unless you're, unless you're really, uh, you know, paying attention as a Catholic, you don't even know what Epiphany is. So kind of a sad thing. Um, but today, especially, uh, we have that commemoration of, of all nations coming to worship Christ. As I mentioned, here, here's Psalm 71. So. Uh, Psalm 71 is mentioned in the introit for today, and I think the, later the, uh, the post-communion are, 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 are one of those. But here is, here is the, the prophecy. Uh, Psalm 71, this is starting verse 8. And he shall rule from sea to sea, and from the river unto the ends of the earth. Before him the Ethiopians shall fall down, and his enemies shall kiss the ground. The kings of Tarshish and the islands shall offer presents. The kings of the Arabians and of Seba shall bring gifts. And all the kings of the earth shall adore him. All nations shall serve him. For he shall deliver the poor from the mighty and the needy that had no helper. So we see there verse 10 especially. The kings of Tarsus, the islands shall offer gifts. The kings of the Arabians and of Seba shall bring gifts. Uh, arise and be enlightened. Now, now this is Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. This is the um, epistle for today. Arise, be enlightened, O Jerusalem, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth and a mist the people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall walk in thy light and kings in the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thy eyes round about and see. All these are gathered together. They are come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar, and the strength of the Gentiles shall come to thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Madion and Ephah. All they from Seba shall come, bringing gold and frankincense, and showing forth praise to the Lord. Uh, thus uh, the prophecy of Isaiah and of King David. And so it was very clearly seen uh, in, in the earliest centuries of the church, those prophecies had been uh, fulfilled. They, the kings did come, and they did bring frankincense and gold and, and myrrh, as we know, and, and those all have specific meanings. And, and these prophecies were, were written 500 years before this happened. Uh, so th this, was, this was seen as, as uh, right, very rightly so, uh, the, the, the fulfillment of, of all of the prophecies and so on. 
Um, now, the wise men themselves, uh, their relics are kept in uh, Cologne Cathedral. Uh, that's, I think, in uh, Germany, close to Belgium. Uh, Empress Helena rescued their relics uh, in the 4th century. Um, yeah, the 4th century. Uh, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar were their names, actual men, um, and more so uh, kings of wisdom, kings in terms of, of virtue and goodness uh, rather than temporal uh, uh, rulers. Um, let's see, the, um, <laughs> the magi they're called, the three kings, the magi, the wise men. Um, the term ma um, magician comes from uh, magus, which means somebody who is, is wise, who has an un intricate understanding of the works of nature. Uh, you know, those people who can do things that, that the normal, normal person would think is impossible, uh, but these wise men, they know how nature works and, and they, can, they can do something that seems like magic, but, but they, just, they just know how things work. And so it's, it's, um, it's very fitting then that these men who understood the work, workings of nature followed nature to Christ. It was the stars, it was the heavens. And, and, and this is not astrology, which is a kind of a pagan um, seeking after forbidden knowledge or, or, or a superstition, uh, but this is astronomy, which is the, the knowing that uh, God is the one who made the stars of the heaven, the sun and the moon. And it says right there in Genesis chapter one, why did God make the sun, the moon and stars? For, for signs and for seasons. Uh, signs are things that we see and that represent something else. And that's exactly what the wise men did. They saw the star of Bethlehem and they thought, this means something else. This is pointing towards something of, of, of great importance. And, and so they traveled to visit. Uh, now, they, they came from the east. Um, and I think it's held that, that Caspar and Melchior were from the region of, of, of Persia and India. And then Balthazar is, is held either from Arabia, sometimes Africa, Ethiopia, as we've heard. Um, but they've been, um, it's, it's hard to know um, what the actual, um, who the actual men were, as opposed to what uh, the, the, the symbolism that they were represented. Um, and, and in fact, you could say that is even more important. So yes, they were real people. But the way that they have come down in, 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 in uh, church tradition over the years, is uh, they represent, as it is, uh, mankind from all places in, in, among the earth, but also uh, all ages of mankind, all ages of the earth. Uh, so Melchior, Caspar, Balthazar. Melchior is, uh, if you look at, a, at, at a, uh, um, uh, the uh, manger scene, right, the, 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 uh, of Christ and the wise men coming, uh, Melchior is going to be the older man with a white beard. Uh, he's represented the being around 60 years old. He's bringing, um, uh, his gift was gold. Um, Casper is uh, a kind of a middle-aged man. He's got a brown beard, uh, around 40 years old. And then Balthazar, uh, there's always, uh, uh, one of the Magi has a dark skin. And he's clean-shaven and is, is bringing, I think uh, he has the myrrh. Now, the, the significance of these, uh, of, of an old man, a middle-aged man, and a young man, is that um, all ages of the world owe God respect. The ancients, those who came before Christ, are under Christ. There's, there's a great picture of uh, the Christ child, and there's the Blessed Virgin holding this little baby, and the Christ child is holding out his hand, and, and Melchior, the oldest, he's on his hands and knees, bending his head underneath Christ's hand to receive the blessing. So it, it, um, that there, there's a, that great um, symbol of, of respect and veneration and deference, right? The kings of the earth shall bow themselves down under Christ. So that, that's a pictorial uh, representation of that. So, so it doesn't matter how, how, you know, those who came before Christ, the ancients of days, uh, they owe respect to Christ. Um, Casper, age 40, the middle-aged, representing the current world. Every, every person alive right now owes Christ deference and respect. All men are called to be in the Catholic Church. And then Balthazar, uh, the young man, age 20, clean-shaven, dark skin, uh, signifies uh, all the world. It doesn't matter how exotic, how far away, how far removed from Jewish culture, Christian culture, whatever it is, 
all are called uh, to worship Christ. And it's, he also represents the young generations, the future generations. From now until the end of time, every man who was born into the world needs to be enlightened by Christ, who is the light of the world. So all ages, all men of all time and all places, everybody needs to come and give Christ honor and veneration and respect and worship. Um, so that would be right. This is really the the um, <laughs> the feast of ecumenism, right? All you other false religions, you need to be coming here and worshiping Christ under the authority of Christ and his and his, his vicar, whom he has placed in charge. Uh, now, now the gifts that were given also have a representation and a meaning. Uh, gold is a symbol of kingship, right? Christ is king, and we owe to God everything, all tithing, all material things. Uh, frankincense is a symbol of deity. You, you, you offered frankincense to God. Um, that's why the, in, in the Roman Empire, uh, the Christians were always being asked to offer incense to the, to the emperor because he was held as a god. You offer incense to God Almighty. Uh, myrrh, and myrrh represents uh, embalming, burial, that this, this child, who is his king and God, is also man. He took flesh for our sake. He can suffer uh, and die and be buried, and myrrh is a symbol of that. Um, so um, all of this, all of this symbolism, all of this meaning, all of this importance, that this is all contained in the Feast of the, of the Epiphany, and that's what has been celebrated by the church you know, from, from the very beginning. Now, the, the lesson that we would take away from that, it really, um, you know, we, we weren't there, you know, we weren't there 2,000 years ago, uh, but we can, we can still bring our gifts to the king. Christmas has come, you know, we've all given each other gifts and presents and so on. Well, now, let's give something to God, and let's give God our version of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And what does that mean? Gold, material things, the wealth of this world, do your tithing. Uh, don't let, you know, make sure that when, when you tithe, it shows that you're in control of your money and not the other way around. So if you haven't been tithing to the church, if you haven't been generous with, with your, your time, your treasure, or your talent, do so. Give that to God. Give that to your fellow man in honor of God. Frankincense. Uh, respect God. Respect the deity. Frankincense, you could say, uh, is respecting uh, um, Christ as God. Uh, what does God want? He wants worship. He wants piety. Uh, he wants us to spend time in prayer. So if you haven't been doing your daily prayers, if you haven't been spending time in prayer, haven't been doing the rosary or your spiritual reading, uh, resolve to do that. Go to Mass, uh, you know, one extra time per week other than on, uh, on Sunday. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here, but that's, that's the idea, right? Is you, you can respect God, given that gift of, 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 of gold, uh, of time, right, frankincense, and now myrrh. How do you give God a gift of myrrh? In that you offer to God your sufferings. He suffered, he died, he was buried, uh, he endured hardship, he uh, endured sorrow. Can we not offer to God those moments in our lives when we are sorrowing and we're suffering as well? That is our offering to God. Here is my gold with my tithing, here is my frankincense with my prayers, and here is my myrrh by offering you my sorrows, my sufferings, my bitterness, um, and not letting that um, uh, take me away, away from love of you, but let that increase our love of God, knowing that you know those who suffer together, they have a kinship. There's a knowledge there. When we truly deeply suffer with somebody else, you get to know them in a way that, that, that otherwise isn't possible. And that's what God wants. That's why God allows suffering, is so that in that suffering, when we look for him, we find him, because he was always there first. He's always suffered first before us in every way. Um, so on this Feast of the Epiphany, let us uh, uh, renew our desire to give God those gifts of everything we have. Uh, thank God for having fulfilled the prophecies, given us, given the world, uh, a Savior and a Redeemer. And, and that really, that's really all we need to know. The fact that the prophecies were fulfilled, this is the true God, true man, this is the true faith. We should be filled with, with such confidence throughout the whole rest of the year. Uh, no suffering can take us away uh, from that worship and that love uh, of Christ. Uh, so God bless you all. In the name of the Father, Son.